morning, everybody. It is good to see everybody on Mother's Day Sunday morning. Facebook, welcome to Real Life Community Church, and welcome all the mothers that are tuning in. I know uh, this morning when I texted my mom and told her Happy Mother's Day, I, I thought about how fortunate I was to, to have a mother that took us to church whether we wanted to go or whether we did want to go. Really, there was no other way than when it was God's day, we were going to be in his house. And I know it has definitely helped form something in me uh, that, 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 I, that I believe when, when the doors are open, you're supposed to be there. But I, I've had some, some really good conversations this week. Is, uh, you know, are we churchgoers or are we Jesus followers? And, and this week in my prayer time in the evenings and in my study times in the mornings, I've been contemplating this and I've had to kind of take a look and say, you know, am I more than just a churchgoer? Am I truly a Jesus follower? My mother brought me up to be a Jesus follower. She brought me up that he was the answer to everything, whether it was a headache, a toenail, or whether it was a heartache. Uh, she showed me the way, and she showed me in the Word how to follow, and she, and she taught us as children. And, and today, it's, it's good to see our family, our church family here, our, our community of believers. Uh, and it's good to see you. It, it's awesome that you're here. We hope today is the best Mother's Day that you will see. Uh, this will be a Mother's Day like no other Mother's Day. It'll be very memorable, I promise. And memorable times, historical times, you know, this is every holiday, every special occasion that we do under this way of doing church is going to be memorable. And you'll always remember it. Uh, and you'll always look back and say, you remember Mother's Day of 2020 was we done this and this. It was a little different. But let's let's do something different today. Let's worship today differently uh, on Mother's Day 2020. Let's let's all, if you're here in your, your lawn chairs, let's stand to our feet. Let, let's gather together. Let's, let's stand together and let's pray. Let's, uh, we was fortunate to be able to go to the young adult cookout this week. I was a little bit late getting there, but I got there for the important part. I still got to eat, and I still got to pray with everybody. I still got to hear some devotion. You know, and, and it reminded me of a time when I was a child, uh, when, when the church was strong, uh, the church was experiencing new things. I think the new thing when I was a child was ladies were wearing culottes. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm dating myself a little bit. And, and they, were, they were doing different things with their hair. They wasn't doing... Uh, beehive hairdos and they were they were kind of uh, coming into a modern day but I will look around this morning and I say man the church looks so much different today than it did when I was a child but Robert it reminded me of a thing when you said you know I see the kids playing in the grass and I see them running around and doing things the church is truly my family in my heart I was leaping with joy because what I've wanted to see is the church like it was when I was a child because that's how it was it was Families coming together. It was children's children, you, our children, your children, everybody playing together, enjoying together, sitting around talking. We were a community. And that's what I see happening through this is a community of believers. Now, I want to ask you, in this community, do you dub yourself a churchgoer or are you a Jesus follower? Because I hope somewhere in there you say, you know what, to follow Jesus, I could do this just a little bit better. I know there's things I can do better every day. And that's that's the awesome thing about our Savior, our Lord, is, is that He's just sitting there waiting on us to call on Him and say, Abba, Father, I need you. Lord, Lord, I need a little more today of this. I need a little bit more of that. But 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 I know that if we stand together in agreement and we stand together as a community of believers, of Jesus followers, we can find Him. Because if we're following Him, that means we're not that far right behind Him. We're doing our best to stay on His heels to follow the leader. This morning as we go in prayer, let's pray together that the Lord will show us more of ourselves than we've ever seen during this season and that the day will be a special day for our mothers and grandmothers and, and the mothers to the motherless. I mean, because because if you love a child and you pray for a child, you're a mother to a child. They're looking at you one way or the other. Heavenly Father, as I come to you this morning, God, we ask, Father, that your presence would be in our worship. Father, that your presence will be in our day all the day long. Father, as children, let us let us honor our mothers, Father. God, God, as mothers, Father, let us sit back and enjoy this day, Lord, and see our offspring, Father. God, that they would bring joy to our eyes. Lord, we ask God that, Father, this morning, God, our worship, Father, would reach the throne of heaven, Lord. God, that we would give you everything we have, Father, this morning. God, that you would let us be followers. And God, that you would that you would just put your put your hand on our lives, Father, that you would stir us emotionally, stir us physically, stir us, Father, as your children. In your name we pray, and we all say together, Amen. Now let's worship the Father this morning. On this Mother's Day, if no other Mother's Day in the world is going to be like it, let's worship Him like there's nothing else like it.
sang that song, I begin to think about my personal life. Man, that's my testimony. I'm not going back to the way it used to be. Some may say, you know what, I, I don't have many regrets. I don't either. But I know I'll never do it the way I did it before I met Christ again. There's nothing that can change my mind. I want to please Him and serve Him more than ever before. We've got some gifts that I want to give to our mothers. We're not going to do it right now. We're going to wait until closer to the end of service. That way you don't have to hold on to it the whole entire time. But I want to let you know, all you mothers, that I appreciate all that you do. You know, there's a lot of things in life that... uh that are hard jobs, and I know that there's stress that comes with a lot of things. And some might say that one job is harder than another, and that that uh, this thing is more stressful than other things. But to be a mother and to be a good one, probably the hardest thing in the world. To be a godly mother is something to be spoken about about a woman, a virtuous woman. I just thank you so much, women of God, for being the glue that holds together anything that is of any worth. I appreciate you. I love you. I want to read to you this morning out of 2 Kings chapter 4, and uh, then we'll pray. One day he came there, and he stopped, and he went into the room upstairs to lie down. And he ordered his attendant, Gehazi, to call this Shunammite woman. So he called her, and she stood before him. And then he said to Gehazi, say to her, Look, you've gone to all this trouble for us. What can we do for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I'm living among my own people. So he asked, then what should be done for her? I want to ask if you would, would you just lift your hands toward heaven and pray with me this morning? Father God, Lord, I praise you, God, for all that you've done, Lord. Lord, I worship you, God, in a time where it seems like it's a, it's a hard thing to do, God. God, I praise you anyway, Lord. 
Lord, I thank you, God, for every mother that's represented here, God. God, I praise you, Lord, Lord, for every woman, God, God, who has held together, God, a family, Lord, because of her prayers, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just move, God, on me this morning, Lord. Give me the words to speak, God. God, I pray that you would just bless each and every household, every family, every life that's represented here, God. We'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for all of it that you do. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. You may be seated. So I begin to think about a good woman. And and though uh, I can name to you a ton of good women, there's a lot of good women in the Bible. There's a lot of, of uh, good women here this morning. I begin to think about not just a good woman, but a good mother. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have, we've, I've, I've used the scripture in a Mother's Day service of a virtuous woman and, and, and talking about how hard she works and all the things that she does. But, you know, I, I begin to think this morning as Pastor Darren said, he said, you know, are we, are we God followers? Believers, are, are we really are we really where we need to be as a child of God, or are we religious? Are we righteous or religious? I, I thought about that a little bit, and I thought, you know, th there's a difference in being a mother, being a good woman, and being a godly mother. It's all all kinds of different ways you can go with that, but. I want to share with you a little bit about this Shunammite woman. I, I enjoy her story. There's so many sermons to be, to be uh, uh, preached about just her and, and what she did. But, but this morning I want to talk to you about how she qualified to be the mother of the year. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 also says, Fight the good fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life that you were called to and have made a good confession about in the presence of of many witnesses. There's many responsibilities that a Christians uh, can have and, and, and they can be very stressful. Medical research shows that stress is a major cause of multiple illnesses. However, I challenge you to name one single vocation, one single position, one single responsibility that is more stressful than motherhood. <laughs> There is no way I could fill my wife's shoes. Sometimes I, I know how to fix things. I say, I think mama's home. <laughs> Gone by myself. <laughs> Sick them on her. I can, I can sometimes talk about how good things are going to be. Do you want to go with me to the store? I'll spend money on you, and then we'll go do something fun. Mama going? Nope. She's going to stay home and sit on the couch and do nothing. And she might even make you clean. Okay, I'll stay with her. It blows my mind, but there's something about a woman that's a, that's a good woman that makes a great mother. But a great mother is guaranteed to be a good woman. In, in April of 2015, during the Baltimore riots, y'all remember all that? It was having all these riots because a man had died. I can't remember the name now, but uh, the mother of the year was showed on every single news station. I mean, she continued to, to circulate. She was on Facebook. She was on YouTube. She was everywhere. It was the woman who went down to the mall because she heard that her son was there. And she grabbed hold of her son and began to beat him to death all the way back to the car. And they videotaped it. She took the brick out of his hand and threw it on the ground and beat that boy. And that boy was way bigger than her. And she, he, he turned around. You got a glimpse of his face. And he's like, he was scared to death. 
He had no problem rioting against the police. He had no problem uh, going and, and doing all these things, these bad things, and he was in his riot gear. He was, he was dressed up, and he had his hood on and everything. He was ready to make some noise, and Mama grabbed hold of him and beat him all the way back to the car. Then she was interviewed. And they interviewed her, and they asked her, they said, why did you go down and get him? Why did you do this? He was trying to do something for a cause. And she said, because I've got four girls and one boy. And you know what? I may have made some mistakes, and he may not be the perfect child, but you know what? I'm going to do my part and do whatever I can do to make sure that he stays where he needs to be. And I know that he did not need to be there, and as long as he's living underneath my roof, he's going to follow my rules. I began to think about that, and I thought, you know what? They, and they captioned all these videos of Mother of the Year, and they talked about it over and over and over. And I began to think about how many times growing up I wanted to do something, and my mama would say, that's not what you're doing. You're doing this. And even though I wasn't much taller than her, she had much more authority over me. I knew that that little woman meant business. I can remember a particular time, and we talk about it all the time. I can remember several times. I remember a lot of times about my mom. I can remember a lot of good times, but you know, sometimes the ones that stick out are the ones where there was correction involved. And there was one particular time, I'm going to tell it. Podium. The, the pulpit this morning. My mama told me to go feed the dogs. <laughs> and it was time for school, and I, I was already dressed for school, and I said, I, I'll feed them when I get home. And she said, you're going to feed them now. And I began to, to pick her back and forth with her, and, and we had already, there was a whole house full all the time at our house. And, 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 and we had already been, been fussing and carrying on stuff. And my mama was putting up the George Foreman grill, the little sandwich maker. Y'all remember them? It would cut the bread into triangles perfect, and it mended the corners real good, and, and it was great. You spray some butter on it, and that thing was perfect for grilled cheese sandwiches. And she was wrapping that thing up that morning, and she reared back and said, I said, go feed the dogs. I said, I'm going. And I went on, and I fed the dogs. There was another time whenever she swung the belt, it caught the fan cord. <laughs> it ripped the fan cord, plumb out of the fan, and the fan spinning wide open. My mama got to laugh, and I never got that whip. <laughs> I never had a fan in my bedroom, neither. It was just off. But I, I can remember those kind of times, but I remember the things that, that she instilled in me to tell me that you're going to go to church, you're going you're gonna to do this as long as I have anything to do with it. This is the way it is. And I alluded to the fact that we always had a house full. We live in a, in a sin-filled, lawless society that is headed in a downward spiral if things don't change, and we need mamas that are going to step up. Sometimes, Brother Darren said, sometimes you're, you're not just a mama to your own kids, but you've helped raise children. So I want to tell you this morning about a great mom. I had the best mom. Y'all bear with me. All day long, I... This morning, I've had a little bit of problem. I've been emotional or something. I had the best mom. She wasn't just my mom, but she was my friend's mom. Mama Kathy. She was a mom to the neighborhood kids. I remember one time that we was at home in the backyard and all of a sudden the kitchen window raised up and you could hear it it made noise when it raised up because it didn't get raised up often but I, I heard the window raise up and as the window raised up I heard my mama's voice and she said boys it's time for y'all to go home they said okay she said when you quit cussing you can come back but we don't do that here Next time I hear it, I'll whip your butt. And she told the neighborhood kids, go home. And, 
and, and they, they went home but just a little bit, and they came back, and, and, and Mama Kathy, we want to apologize. We're sorry. We, we didn't mean to and everything, but I can remember her getting on the neighborhood kids and, and telling them, you know, how it was going to be at her house. I can remember that when we went to Bible school or or, uh, or to revival or whatever it was, a kid's crusade, whatever was going on, I can remember that sometimes we would make two trips because Mama would go around the neighborhood and we would pile all the neighborhood kids in her car, take them to church. And then there was foster kids. My mom, she, uh, she had tons of kids in the house all the time. I don't know how many times we went to bed and there would be four kids in the house and when we would wake up there would be six or eight kids in the house there was kids that would come and they would just stay there for a few nights until they found the place and and then some that stayed around and and they got married and they still come around and 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 uh and some that still call and i see them out places and they say tell mama kathy i said hey and and different things that there, there was always people but i saw a godly woman my mama still see it mom there was cousins I had cousins that stayed at my house every single night during the school week their parents worked third shift and and so my uncle would drop off my cousins at the house they would come in they'd go to bed they'd wake up and mom would make breakfast for everybody and and it seemed like that was probably about four or five years that that went on and and I, I seen my mom be a mom to, to cousins, to, to foster kids, to, to neighborhood kids, to church kids. I seen her take and, and spend a lot of time on the weekends, kids at her house from church kids. She worked as a, a house parent in a group home. Everything that I feel like a mom should be. There was a time <laughs> there was a time whenever I can remember that that we didn't really have a whole lot of extra money since I've been married and and uh, and I, I, I would still had habits of I was a single man and could just blow my money on whatever I wanted to. And so sometimes at the end of the week it was really, really light, and and so I remember one time I, I asked mom, "Can I can I borrow a couple dollars?" and and she said, "Yeah," and she said, "I'm going to put it in the there was a, a, a cabinet thing, and the cabinet had a little jar in it." She said, "I'm going to put it in the jar, and and you can get it anytime you want to." And and I can remember going there, and and even whenever I didn't need it, I would just look to see, and the money was there. And, and, and even if I didn't get it, the money was there, and I knew that it was going to be there, and I knew that I could count on her. As I begin to think about being able to count on worldly people, on, on people who are actually here on this earth that we can see and touch, and, and if we can put our, our faith and our trust in them, if there's anybody that my kids count on and they trust as their mama, and, 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 and so on and so forth with a lot of other people, we count on our mothers. Whenever I think about the fact that how much we believe in our mother and how much we trust in her and we know that she's going to be there for us, how much more can we count on our Heavenly Father? I'm not changing this from Mother's Day to Father's Day, but, but we can count on our Heavenly Father. We can count on God to be there for us for anything. If we can count on God to be there for us, then whenever we have a Christian mother, then we know that it's that much better because our mother has instilled certain values in us and says, you know what, I want you to know who God is. I'm going to get back to my message. Regardless of what anyone says, Resisting Satan's temptations is a battle that must be fought continually. Satan is a deceitful demon that, that waits patiently for you to, to let your guard down. We need to claim the victory by the words of our testimony and the blood of our spotless lamb. In the fourth chapter of 2 Kings, there's a Shunammite woman, and, and that's a, she's a candidate for the Mother of the Year Award, and she's a faith-filled, blood-bought woman who's who's made up her mind that she'll fight hell and back for her, uh, for her child and the one that she loves, and, and Satan wants to take her child. In 2 Timothy 3 and 12, it says this, says, 
Yea, and that, yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I want to point that out for just a second let you know that if you live for God, you shall suffer persecution. Everybody is not going to be your best friend. Everybody is not going to like you. You are not going to be the highlight of everybody's life. There's going to be people that will come against you. And if they don't, if you think that I've got it made on easy street because everybody loves me and I am the greatest thing since sliced bread, I want you to understand that you probably need to stop for a minute and check your life and find out, am I where I need to be with God? We don't, we don't have all these things that we need to fight against Satan on our own. But with the aid of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the appropriate blessings are provided for us to make it through the situations that we're presented. When Satan sees you reaching for God's help, his, his first uh, inclination is, is going to be try and stop you, try to try to intervene and, and, uh, and, and stop you harness you and, and just get on your back and, and break you down so that you can't get a hold of God's power. You weren't on Satan's radar until he seen God blessing your life. You wasn't, you wasn't in Satan's vision until he seen that God was really doing something for you. So whenever something bad starts happening, don't get all upset and say, if this is what I get for being a Christian, I'm going to quit. But instead say, praise God, I'm doing something right. If, if he's on me, that means that I'm doing something the way I should be doing it. And I'm going to keep on pushing on. I'm going to keep on moving forward. This Shunammite woman is described as a great woman. She's content. Even though nothing is perfect and, and her desire is to be a blessing to the man of God. She started inviting this man of God over for dinner. Every time that he would go down to uh, be coming by her way, she would invite him over and she would say, we want, to, we want to give you something to eat. We want to take care of you. We want, to, we want to make sure that you've got everything that you need. And then it got to the point that she even told her husband, she said, I want to create a chamber for him. I want to build, a, I want to build an addition on the house. I want to have him his own bed and his own lamp and, and, and his own stool. And I want, to, I want to make a place to where he's comfortable and he'll want to stop here. I've shared with you that, that my daddy is, has made it very well known that if you come to his house, if you ring the doorbell, it's all right. But don't just wait, and if he never comes, leave. He wants you to get your key out when you ring the doorbell and go ahead and let him know I'm coming on in. Uh, maybe knock as you walk in, but he would, he would prefer that you just come in and say, I'm here. He wants, he wants you to know that you're welcome at his house all the time. And, and, and mama's the same way. She wants you to know that anytime you want to come, she'll tell the kids all the time, just come on up here whenever you want to come. She don't care. If she don't have time to sit down and just play right then, it's all right. Just come on. You're more than welcome. And whenever I go in her house, the first thing I do is I go to the drawer on the refrigerator and pull it open, and I find what she's got stored away for the kids, the Reese cups that are in the refrigerator, cold. They're great. And so I know that there is, she has done certain things to make sure that they know that this is yours. This is for you. And, and sometimes she tells them one, but you always see them with five. They know that they can have as many as they want. Sometimes she'll say, okay, that's enough. But, but, but if they ask one more time, just one more for the road, one more to walk across the yard and go home, it's all right. And they do that. This woman, she was a godly woman. She wanted the man of God to stop at her house every time he came by. So, so she created, she asked her husband, she said, we want to make a spot where he feels comfortable to continue to stop here. We can stop right there and talk a little bit about have we created a room for Jesus to stop and be a part of our life? Have we created a spot where he feels welcome, where he knows that this isn't just the guest room, this isn't just a place that you can come by when you want to, but that you might want to call first because somebody else might be in here, but this was his room, this was a spot for him. And, and whenever they ask her, they said, what can we do for you? You've been so good for us. She said, nothing, I'm with my people, I'm good, I'm content. I'm happy enough just being your servant. 
I'm happy enough just making you happy. I'm happy enough just doing something to put a smile on your face. I'm happy enough with you just stopping by here. So if you look on down in the scripture, the uh, Gehazi says she don't have a child and her husband's old. He said, okay. So he tells her to come here. He says, he says, I'm going to bless you with a child. I, I'm going to pray that this season, this time, next year, you'll have a child. And, and she said, whoa, whoa, whoa. In, in layman terms, she said, don't lie to your handmaiden. Don't lie to me. Don't tell me something like that and, and get, my, get me excited. Don't get me all, all, all excited thinking such a thing. Don't lie to me. And don't tell me such a thing. But, but then one year to the day, all of a sudden, she is blessed with a child. And, and this child grows up. And, and daddy's old, but he's still working. And he's in the field. And, and all of a sudden, he, he comes to daddy and he says, Dad, I've got a headache and it's really bad. And, and, and I, I feel bad. And he said, okay. Well, he tells the servant, he says, take him in the house and go get his mother. And his mother goes in there. And the boy dies in her lap. How many times has God blessed us with something only to see hard things happen? I thought about that and I thought about mothers who were well and at, at, at a, a Mother's Day event or celebrating Mother's Day and somehow that has lost a child. Whenever God has allowed your child to be took away from you, a gift that he gave you all of a sudden took back. And how that sometimes a mother, <coughs> a mother must feel like that. I, I'm without. I have nothing now, because my child was took away. So immediately we begin to question God. God, how could you? How can you take away my child? How can you take away this promise? How can you take away my blessing? As we begin to wonder those things, this, this woman, what we do sometimes in, in questioning God and what God does is we allow the devil to feel like, I've got room right here. I see the weakness. I see what's going on. That's the perfect spot for me to jump in and begin to just grind and tear down every single bit of life and destroy this person because they've questioned. But instead, what she done is she, she took him and carried him up to the man of God's bedroom. And she, she carries him into the bedroom and she lays him down and she puts him on his bed and she shuts the door, locks it tight, and she goes and she begins to set out on her journey. She goes and asks the servant, says, saddle the donkey and set the pace and do not slow down unless I tell you. And as she begins to get closer, the man of God sees her and he sends his servant and he says, go find out if everything's okay. And he says, is your husband all right? Are you okay? Is your boy okay? And she said, yeah, everything's fine. I just need to see the man of God. And she goes to him and, and she lets him know that you need to come. I, I picture this woman as being very hard to read. One thing I have found about women, they can be hard to read. She fell down at his feet and began to cling. And she began to weep and she began to share and tell him that he had a headache and now he's, he's dead. But if you'll just come back, if you'll come see. She had faith in the man of God. She fought for what she believed in. She put everything that she had and said, I'm going to go after her. I'm going to go after her. I seen what happened to get this child. I know what happened to get this gift. I'm not letting the devil have credit to see that my mind is, is in, in turmoil and I'm just, I'm just completely devastated right now. I'm not giving the devil room and, and I'm not going to tell all the family, begin to prepare the funeral and, and get the oils and everything ready that we can prepare them for the graveside. I'm not doing 
doing any of that kind of stuff. What I am going to do is I'm going to secretly go to the man of God. He goes in and he shuts the door and he gets on top of him. He lays his face. The boy begins to get warm and, and the Bible says that he breathes in him. And as he begins to get warm, the boy begins to sneeze. And as he begins to sneeze over and over and over seven times, as all that takes place, the boy is back to life and the woman is grateful again. There's good mothers who have done their best to raise their children and their children have strayed. And they begin to question God, God, why? Why have my children strayed, Lord? I've done everything right, God. I, I brought them up in church, Lord. I, I showed them the way. I taught them. I, I was their Sunday school teacher, Lord. I just don't understand why. God, why would you allow this to happen? Sometimes we just need to stop and continue and pray and say, God, you give me this promise, God. You, you gave me this child. And Lord, I'm just trusting you that you're going to take care of them and bring them right back. Matthew chapter 11 and 12 says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence, and the violent has been seizing it by force. Sometimes calamity that happens in life didn't come to discourage but rather it came to wake up the fighter that God put inside of you I had to stop and realize something I I've been upset. I've been I've been wondering, God, why why is this continuing to go on? Why are these things continuing to happen, Lord? I am ready. I want to see it happen right now, God. I'm believing it. I'm standing on your word. I'm proclaiming it. I'm professing it. I, I'm giving. I'm serving notice to the devil. Devil, you can't do this. But but then I realize things that there is people who is learning. Pastors all across the world. I was I was talking to a friend this morning, and I and and as we begin to share and pray for one another and, and things, I. He, he began to say, you know what? He said, it's, it's been different the past few months. He said, but we're taking things in a new direction. He said, and I like the way it's looking. I, I'm excited about it. He said, I, I wish that others would see the positive in it. Sometimes, bad things don't come to discourage you. Sometimes they happen just to get your attention. So maybe you'll realize your blessings. Here are some traits of a good mother fighter. A Shunammite woman harnessed her emotion. She didn't let the devil see her sweat. She showed him that God was on her side. you got to stay faithful in God's promises. Don't expect anything short of God's promise to happen. This Shunammite woman was emotional and in an emotional battle. But she stated, she said, it will, it shall be well. One version said it will be well. Shall be well. It's going to be good. Don't let the devil see you when you're down, mothers. Unless he's seen you while you're down on your knees, thanking God for the blessings that he's given you. Sometimes you may question of why things happen the way they do and, and why your child is doing the things that they're doing or involved in what they're involved in. Sometimes you just got to smile and say, I'm trusting God that he's going to take care of them. Have a sense of urgency to get to someone that you can agree with. Have a word from God that will overturn the problem. She told the servant, said, saddle the donkey. And drive. Go forward. Don't slack up unless I tell you to. Y'all ever seen a woman on a mission? Woo. 
I do not like going shopping with a woman. They know what they want or seem to, but at the same hand, it's can be chaotic and madness. John this morning was sharing with me about going shopping with women. Poor fella. I, I felt sorry for him. Thought, man, I can't imagine to be in that spot. I like to go get what I'm getting and go. But there's some kind of chaotic madness going on. Let's get back to a mission. They're on a mission. You don't want to get in between them and the goods. You don't want to don't want to block them up from that sale. I love watching the news reports about Black Friday shopping. I love it. I, I like to look it up and just watch some video clips. There's 700 people waiting outside the store, and we have 30 of this uh, item. What are they waiting on? They ain't getting nothing. They're on a mission. They think that maybe if they wait long enough that the truck will come and deliver more. Whenever you're on your mission and you're going where you're wanting to get to, you need to have somebody that you can trust in to get to. If I need a prayer to go up and I know that I can count on someone, I can count on my mother. I can call her and say, Mom, would you pray about such and such? And when she says yes, I don't question nothing else. I don't say, hey, hey, would you pray with me for this long about it or, or for that long? I don't, I don't say nothing else. I just say, will you pray about this? And if she says yes, good enough. Whenever a mother is on a mission, she's got her mind made up. The other day I was at a friend's house and we was talking about the chickens. And they just had some little divvies hatched off and, and they was setting up going to set up a pen so the divvies didn't get near the dogs and, and everything. And I thought, you know, what's crazy is whenever you got them little divvies going around and that mama hen... She goes up and flogs something because it gets too close to them divvies. She ain't scared of dying to protect them babies. Dog would eat her. She's going to try her best to flog it. Women, if you want to be a great mother, make sure that that person that you go to when you have a need is just as godly anybody that you've ever met you must have determination to win Jacob wrestled with an angel all night to the breaking of day and said I will not let go except thou bless me sometimes you've got to hold on all night long waiting for morning to come sometimes you've got to continually fight and stay in the fight. You've got to continue to move forward. And, and, and even though it feels like I cannot hold on any longer. How many of you have ever fought somebody in your sleep? Absolutely nobody. Let me tell you about fighting in my sleep. So sometimes I have fought in my sleep. And in my sleep whenever I fight. It seems like I just can't seem to get my punches thrown. And, 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 and I used to dream about it. And I would wake up in a sweat. And I would wake up just wore out. And I would think, you know, I'm not hurt and I didn't get beat up, but I just could not swing my arms. It was just, it was so heavy. It was so hard to fight. And, and that feeling is how sometimes it feels whenever we have prayed and prayed and prayed and we've sought God and we're saying, God, I want you to save my children. I want you to save my spouse. Lord, Lord, I want you to save my grandchildren. I want you to work in their lives. And, and you, you fight and you fight and you fight and you feel like it just seems to never get anywhere. Don't give up because if you'll keep on weeping, may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning hold on stay missional that God would show you the answer that you ask for Elisha told Elijah as the Lord liveth and thy soul liveth I will not leave thee and he received a double portion of Elijah's spirit Elijah told him, said, the only way that you'll get anything is if you see me. Whenever I go, you gotta, you got to stay. And you've got to stay focused on God. You can't, you can't waver to the left and right and think that things are going to be. Elijah told Elisha, 
stay with me, focus on me, and if you'll be there with me all the way till the very end, be with me all the way to, till it's over with, you'll receive. And he said, I, I guarantee it, I'm going to be there. And he done that. Sometimes you've got to be willing to stay with God all the way to the end. All the time, actually. You can't give up on him. Whenever you begin to lighten up and slack off, that's whenever the devil says, you know what? I see a weak moment. I'm going to jump in there. The Shunammite woman qualified mother of the year because she was determined that if God gave her the child, that he would also be able to use the man of God to resurrect the child. Ask the music if they'd come on back. I believe that it is time for the church to send a message. If we've got to drag them off the corner, we'll not lose our children anymore. If we have to drag them away from the riot, kicking and screaming, while we slap them upside the head and say, you're not going to be a part of this, I'm taking you to church, that's what you got to do. It is very disturbing to hear parents say, I'm their friend. And I give them the choices to do what they want to do. I give my kids choices too. Clean up the room or get a whipping. One choice I'll never give them is you don't have to go if you don't want to go. You may say, well, your parenting skills are different from mine. No, I want to make sure that they know I did everything in my power to make sure they was where they needed to be. As long as I'm able there's a chance that they grow a little more than I grew. And they get a lot bigger than I get, than I got, than I'm getting. <laughs> On the other hand, I want them to know that I did everything I could. I begged my mama, Mama, just let me spend a night with them. I'll come to church. I'll be there in the morning. She said, no, you won't. You won't wake up on time. You're not, you're not doing that. You're coming home. You can stay on Friday night. I was worried to get into too, too much trouble. Because if mom and dad didn't know the people just the right, they'd say, we're going to come by there. I didn't want that to happen. So sometimes it was easier just to not do anything. But every time I did do anything wrong, all I could think about in the back of my mind was disappointing mama. I got in trouble at school a few times and the principal said, we're going to call your parents. And one time I remembered, I said, let's call my daddy. He said, call your daddy. I said, yeah. Dad's going to whip me. I'm going to get it good, but I don't want mom to know. He said, okay, let's call your mom. Man, I was mad. I told mom, I said, don't tell daddy. I figured if I was going to disappoint her, I didn't want to whip him from him too. <laughs> Mothers are the most precious gift that anyone could ever have. Some don't have theirs. And I know that that is hard. And I realize that there's people that just wish for one more day. As I was talking to my friend this morning on the phone, he said, pray for his wife. She just lost her mother uh, a few months ago, just recently, and said that this is the first mother day without her, Mother's Day without her, and she was taking it hard. I realize that it is very hard to not have a mother. 
I don't see mine every single day. And sometimes something goes on and I might not talk to her in a day. But I couldn't imagine not having her. But I know that whenever she's gone, that I'll have the joy of knowing that I had a good one. She done the best she could to raise me in a godly way. It is more important for your children to remember that Mama loved me enough to share the gospel with me and lead me to the cross than to have a friend that gave you everything that you ever wanted if she didn't lead you to Christ. Mothers, I thank you so much. Whether you're here or whether you're online, I thank you so much for what you've done. If it wasn't for good godly women, the church probably wouldn't exist. Because men, when they get frustrated, a lot of times they throw in the towel. But because of a praying woman, our church exists today. Because of a praying woman, we get to have service the way we're having service. Because of a godly woman that cared about her child, You're alive. She could have made the choice to go and not follow through with that pregnancy, but she didn't. She, for some reason, she chose to have you. Whether you had the best childhood or not, let your mother know thank you. This morning, I, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for all of our mothers first. If there's any special needs, we'll take care of that too. But I want to pray for our mothers. During the time that we're in, the first person to stress will be that man that lacking on the job and things aren't what it needs to be. But that mother who's trying to hold everything together and keep everybody happy, she's got a lot of stress on her shoulders more than you might ever possibly know. I want us to pray for mothers, not just here, but all across the world, that be able to hold it together. I want us to pray that God would give them a special blessing. Because if it wasn't for them, none of us would be here. It took a mother. We all got a mom. I want us to pray for them. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, God, to be able to share cards and gifts with their mothers. Lord, and the ones who can't, God, God, I pray, Lord, that you would let them know, God. God, they've got an opportunity to be a mother. When it seems the hardest, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would just strengthen, God mother. Lord, that she would continue to be a protector, a provider. More than anything, God, that she would be that one that leads her child to the cross. Lord, I pray that as you've put godly women in my path, God, God, through the years, I pray, Lord, Lord, that you would continue and set godly women in the past children all across the world, God whether they don't have a mother or their mother just isn't around. Father, I pray that you would send some woman to show them love. That they would tell them about the gospel and the good news and, and who you are, Father. I pray that you would just bless and move on each and every home, God. Every life, every car, every chair that has a mother in it this morning. Lord, and I pray, God, that they would realize the blessing that they have. For they have created hopefully a vessel to take out your news and share it with the world. Father, I pray, God, that you would just pour out on hearts and lives all across the world this morning. 
touch them, God. Let this be a day, a day of remembrance, God, of how special you are. God, that you let us have a mother. Father, we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there anybody this morning that needs special prayer? Before we change the order just a little bit. special gifts a little bit different flowers we want to give a flower to the newest mother who is our newest mother that's here in other words who's got the youngest youngin who is that cars I can't see you blacked out windows anybody got a kid that's under two in the cars honky horn I don't know if everybody tell the truth Katie it is now while I walk this one over here y'all go ahead and work this out who's the oldest huh.
oldest mother. Oldest mother. Do we have a mother that's over 30? Any? Over 30. We got like three. Over 39. Any over 39? Got a few over 39. Do y'all know who's the oldest? And that way I can just take it to you without having to say the next number. Gail. Is anybody older than Gail? If you are, you're going to take it up with Gail. Because I ain't begging on that. All right, I need a little bit of help from somebody. I got tons of volunteers. Praise the Lord. All these volunteers. And then we have some roses for every mom, even our youngest or our newest and our oldest. Newest and oldest. day by day trusting in the Lord if you've got prayer we'll pray for you if you have a need we'll do whatever we can to make sure the need is met as far as the building goes we'll get to that whenever time's right we love you, appreciate you keep your distance and tell somebody hello this morning and uh, mothers Thank you so much for all that you do.